Is the App Store a monopoly? Agreements and disagreements. This is Mac Voices. Mac Voices is sponsored by Rocket Money. Stop throwing your money away. Cancel unwanted subscriptions the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash macvoices. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, the second part of this Mac Voices Live conversation on Valentine's Day of all days was a bit of a contentious discussion about App Store and the potential of it being a monopoly. The panel also got around to talking about app discoverability as well. Let's go back and let them do the talking. Jeff, you want to bring up your thought experiment? Uh, my thought experiment. Um, should there be... I'll just read what I wrote. It'll be easier. Should there be regulatory limits on how much money companies can make on services and products? Well, and I kind of already responded that depends on if it's monopoly. Like we decided, we decided railroads should be regulated and electric companies and things like that. Yeah, I mean, I I, I see the point there, and I guess. You get into this thing of of okay, so let's let's go back to my favorite example, you know, and and that's the department store with the Dockers pants. Okay, so if I, the department store decides they want to carry Dockers, but they don't want to carry Levi's for whatever reason. Okay, whether Levi's is not willing to pay the freight or whether they just don't want them in, does that make that? department store a monopoly or engaging in monopolistic practices? Or do they just say, hey, we have a limited amount of, of space here. And so we think that we can sell more Dockers than Levi's. And by eliminating Levi's, then we can sell other products. Should Levi's have a right to say, walk in and say, no, I want this table over here so I can put my product here. Now, we know that nothing works that way. And that's what I feel like the App Store, whenever, whenever we get into these discussions, I feel like that's what everybody's demanding that Apple do is, I have a right to put my product in your store. And I do not think so. Well, do, just, you, do you wish that uh, Apple would not allow side loading on the Mac? No, but that's a different platform. That's a different. That's a so completely what? different situation where expectations were what? set at but a different time. But it's such time. a great system. Why don't you wish that the Mac had that same system? Well, there's only one reason, and that's because I've come to depend on apps that, you know, do get can can be side loaded. But well, on the other hand, by just, default just, today, that's basically what the Mac is. You have to go in and uh, and change settings. the The default on the Mac right now is uh, is set to uh, to drive you into the apps, the Mac App Store. And uh, and to limit what you're buying in the Mac App Store, so you have to go and change settings to uh, to allow other apps to be installed. And if you if you want to have complete control over what's installed, um, at, at that point now you're going in and doing doing um, you know, like command line or uh, the the tools in recovery mode where you're changing. Uh, the fundamental security levels and it's it's clearly designed right now to uh to get people to treat buying on the mac the same way they do as buying on an iphone or ipad as far as apps go well, clearly uh, apple would like to move to that future and i think that was their plan when they started the mac app store and it, it hasn't really worked um and you know they've had the sense to realize that that would just drive people to Windows if they, you know, did that because it's not a monopoly. You know, Apple and the iPhone, they have a monopoly. On the Mac, they don't. And, oh, look how different they behave. Is John Deere a monopoly? For repair, it is. <laughs> well, and that, uh, you that's know, where I'm going with this. Um, is Because John Deere limits what uh, how, how you can repair their products, does that make them a monopoly? You can buy other tractors. You can buy other combines. You don't have to buy from John Deere. And and I'm tossing this out as another thought experiment. Jeff, I think, but the, I wanted to address your earlier one. Um, 
that ca- the way you characterized it, you're saying that Apple was trying to encourage people just to buy from the App Store. I think is is mm-hmm. the essence of it. Okay, I would submit to you that yes, that is one of the effects, but one of the other effects of it is that it is trying to prevent me from downloading things that can be sideloaded that I really don't want on my system because they can do damage um, or, you know, contain malware. So, you know, I think you that's have- a side effect of what they're trying to do. And it's a well, nice side effect, but I, I think this is more about, uh, about control and yeah, I, wanting I to have control not- over the customers. I don't know that it's a zero sum game. You know, I think I mean oh, it's not a zero sum game. It, it it's it's it benefits everybody. It benefits Apple and it benefits me. And ironically, just today I saw a write up on an app that looked interesting, looked like something I could definitely use. <clears throat> it I side lo- it, it was a side load, it was not in the app store. I downloaded it, I tried it. Happily there was nothing there were no bugs or, or anything nasty in it. But it absolutely did not function at all as represented. So, you know, and yeah, you know, my first reaction is now I know why, why it wasn't in the App Store. Because it was not doing what it was supposed to do. Um, I'm not going to call it out, but, you know. but I'll just totally call it out so people know not to get the app. No, no, I won't do that because that's that's not that's not really fair because maybe I should have done more research. But I, I've re- relied on one review. And that doesn't mean it didn't it didn't do some of what it said. It just didn't do everything it said. So, well, Apple does absolutely not. There's all kinds of scam apps in Apple Store, and that's one of my complaints. That you know they are not protecting customers at all from that kind of thing. And oh my gosh, you were able to download a free trial, right? Which Apple will not let you do. You know through their mechanism. So true, um, yeah, yeah. you know, but it seems like the system worked very well to protect you. You were able to download and try it and determine it wasn't the thing for you. And in the app store, you can't do that. It's a fair point. It's a fair point. Um, Paul asks you, Jim, how many more sales would you have if you were on the Mac store than just being on the web? Do you have any ideas or any way to measure something like that? Um, well, I used to have an app in the Mac App Store, and now I don't anymore. So uh, it made some sales, but you know, it wasn't it wasn't much of a you know. You know that, that's a, you know an interesting point. When the Mac App Store came out, I think I thought, and I think a lot of other people, that this was a precursor to that being the only way to you know that that would be just like iOS, and that side loading would go away. Um, and it's interesting because, you know, it hasn't. It's gone actually the reverse. You know, some number of people that were in the the Mac App Store dropped out of it and, uh, you know, now are sideloading only. Um, and, you know, that issue isn't only around the price. In fact, you know, I, I think that a lot of developers feel like that is a point, but it's not the major point. It's basically you have no connection with your customers. So if you go through the app store, you don't you know you don't know even know who you, you know like you can't notify them. Oh, we got a bug fix release or or whatever. That's that's not possible. You can't um, you know you can't sell upgrades. Um, you know which was sort of the the the, the model. You know, and, and lots of people are complaining about everything subscriptions. Well. That's basically because Apple forced that on developers. I, I disagree with mm. that part. I yeah. think subscriptions is because uh, developers realized that the business model, for a lot of developers, the business mm-hmm. model of sell a product and then uh, and then a couple years later sell an upgrade was not a sustainable business model for them, whereas uh, as doing subscriptions was. And well, I don't think I, that I, had... Anything I, to do with the app store? Well, it had something to do with it because you cannot sell upgrades on the app store. So I, I would, basically, I would, that 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 model is eliminated. Um, and uh, you can you you can't sell upgrades in the sense that 
I'm upgrading from version 1.0 to 2.0, but I can release a 1.0 version, then I can release a separate 2.0 version. And if I want to price it for a limited time on the App Store as, you know, yeah, yeah, that's that's a nightmare for everybody. Um, It's not ideal, but you have no way of notifying the existing customers. yeah, the only way to do an upgrade price is to do it for a limited time, but you can't tell anybody. So, you know, it, the users would have to like somehow magically discover it in that limited time. And if somebody comes by three years later and say, oh, I had the old version, don't I get a deal? Nope, no deal for you. Um, you know. Um, uh, shoot, who, darn, who makes ScreenFlow? Telestream. 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 Telestream does that with ScreenFlow. Yeah, and you just have to buy it over and over again. Yes. Yeah. No, but no you, discount. But, so but basically usually, they've turned it into a subscription. No, you get an upgrade discount. You not upgrade, on the app store. Not on the app store. Oh, no. the app store, no. Right. Yeah, no. But but they, they usually for a period of time you can buy it at the upgrade price and then it goes back to full retail. And there are also some other weird things about the licensing. I think, if at least the last one I looked at, if I remember correctly, the licensing they do is, um, if you, obviously if you buy it in the App Store, you can install it on all of your Macs. If you buy it directly from them, I think you have one or two Macs that one you can Mac. install it on. One, just one, is it? So you know they've made it. They've made it a differentiator that I, if I buy from them. I may be able to get a better price, but I only put it on one Mac. If I buy the App Store version, then I can put it on all my Macs. Mm-hmm. Your mi- your mileage may vary. Yeah. So I don't know. We we beat. Th- oh yeah. Hey, wait a minute. I want to go back. Nobody nobody successfully defeated my my um, department store argument though. Yeah, but there's oh. more than a department store. Right. Exactly. Department yeah. stores aren't a monopoly. Okay, good point. Good point. But but if I come down to it that I own that store, I don't feel like you should have the right to come in and just say I want to put my product in in uh, you you don't have the right to say you want to of put your not, product in my store. Of course not because you know you, you can you know but you can you know you can go to Macy's, you can go to Bloomingdale's, you can go to you know, you can there's multiple department stores. Take, you know, Target uh, Walmart, you know, they go to, you know, and try to get their things in, but there's, there's, you know, if you want to do software on an iPhone, you have to get, go through Apple full stop. But if I'm the only store in town, if I'm Walmart and I'm the only store and we know all, all about that, how Walmart has caused a lot of things to close down, then does that make me a monopoly? No, because then Amazon gets the money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So should other companies oh, okay. be allowed to make iPhones? Because Apple has a monopoly on iPhones. Which is actually not true. They don't have a monopoly on iPhones. They're just the only company that can make them. Right. And if and if you feel that strongly about some of this, then by all means, buy an Android. Well, and here's the thing. How many companies are allowed to make the Samsung Samsung Galaxy S23? Should other companies be allowed to make that phone? So they essentially can, but but Samsung has a monopoly then on making Galaxy smartphones. Well, they have a monopoly on that name. So, are you saying that every other, or that other, not every other, but every, that other Android phones are the equivalent to the Galaxy, and therefore it's not a monopoly? It's. I, I'm just tossing stuff out to stir the pot, and uh, <laughs> you know, and, and, and that's Apple's it. argument: is hey, we don't have a monopoly. Go, you know, buy an Android phone if you don't, you know, and then you can install. And you know, maybe they're right. Um, I mean, people. There's, you know, that's like our, you know, railroads had this argument hundred years ago, and um, you know, was Southern Pacific a monopoly or not? And that 
Well, certainly something that people argued about. Hey, Jim. Yeah. Jim. Was there also kind of the same argument, especially back in the late 90s, early 2000s, that Windows was dominant and uh, the government wanted to get involved? I remember um, God, who was the senator from Orrin Hatch, Orrin Hatch from oh, Utah, yeah. oh. really wanted to Im- implode. Uh, well, that was because of Novell. That was because of Novell, a Utah oh, company. That, that's a good point. Yeah. But still, it, it's. I'm, for, first of all, I, there are a couple things. I, I, I am not a. Uh, um, I'm not sure what well, science this is when we talk about. Well, and, and uh, the DOJ did go after Microsoft, and they're, they're, they, well, Microsoft operated under a consent order, I believe, for a while. Yeah, well, and that's because there's a difference between being a monopoly and and abusing your power as a monopoly to control the market. Isn't that what the Apple Store does? The the App Store does? Isn't that controlling the market? Mm-hmm. Well, that's what and we're talking that about. Depends. I mean, people yeah, have they? different opinions on it. Yeah, yeah. I think. And, by the way, I I don't think it, it's a. Um, uh, I think there's more akin to socialism than it is a. Um, um, what was the word we were saying? It was a. Um, um, you know, it's kind of more of a monarchy uh, to a certain extent. Uh, yeah. a- Apple has it; they control everything that that they do. It's uh, um, anyway. It, I'm yeah, fine it's with it as a like consumer. A, it's definitely like a mon- monarchy. Yeah. I, th- I think some of the flexibility we we still see out there the the fact that you can install mac apps without having to go through the store some of that is because of threats from you know uh eu threats from other people looking and saying hey is apple a monopoly or not just the questions being asked um i think apple's taken some steps to lessen the feel of monopoly um the the um you know the the desire to change apple or reduce its power i think it's it's still there with a lot of people i still worry that stepping in and saying oh, okay apple's got to be split apart or broken up or whatever i don't see a good way of doing that and retaining the benefits we get from apple now um yeah, you know, I don't think there's a good understanding of how some of the useful parts work. So I still worry that that just you know breaking it up and saying okay, services have to be separate, or you can't make this much money, so you've got to split up into a couple different companies could go horribly wrong. Uh, on the other hand, yeah, it's it's true. There's not a lot of flexibility on iOS devices as far as getting software. It's pretty much one spot. So the store is effectively a monopoly as far as I can tell. Yeah, you know, you can code it yourself and put whatever you want there, but I'm not sure that that totally counts. Today's edition of Mac Voices is supported by Rocket Money at rocketmoney.com slash Mac Voices. Try it free for 30 days is enough time to try and completely forget about a subscription or service. Before you know it, You're paying for a subscription you don't use every single month. With Rocket Money, you can change that with a few quick taps. Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill, is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Simply find the subscription you don't want and press cancel, and Rocket Money will cancel it for you. No more long hold times with customer service or tedious emailing back and forth. Rocket Money makes canceling subscriptions as easy as the click of a button. I've lost track of subscriptions and wasted money. I bet you have too. Cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash macvoices. That's rocketmoney.com slash macvoices. rocketmoney.com slash macvoices. Thanks to Rocket Money for supporting this week's Mac Voices. And, and I'm not sure what the answer is. You know, I, chances are if governments start regulating it, they're going to, you know, 
not do a very good job of that and could easily wind up being in a worse off situation in spite of, you know, what I'm uh, stating are, are of the drawbacks of the current situation. Um, you know, and my example of railroads, governments didn't, you know, wound up damaging the railroad business quite a bit. Um, so, you know, I, I, I just hope Apple, you know, is becomes, you know, I think they are being a little bit more careful, but I, you know, I think they need to be even more careful than they have been because, you know, it's headlines like this, Oh, 80 billion, you know, in this business. Well, that's going to attract, um, you know, uh, attention from competitors and governments. It, it's also, uh, a collection of what's essentially several different businesses that, I mean, effectively, uh, yes, it's all Apple, but all of these different parts of the services, uh, business that Apple has, they're basically different businesses. So, uh, you know, so, so saying Apple's, uh, services business makes more than Nike and McDonald's combined. Okay. Well, you're sticking two businesses together and, uh, and Apple has more than two businesses stuck together to come up with their numbers. Webb, did you raise yeah, your yeah, hand? I, yeah, I just, yeah, and I, I, I'm afraid I'm going to go down a rabbit trail that we don't want to go down. So let's, uh, uh, we can go, to yeah. let's go for yeah. it. <laughs> it, it, it. It seems to me as a social issue that, you know, we want all of our, companies all over business we want you to be successful but by god don't get to be too successful because if you do we're going to come break you apart and regulate you and that that you know and i i'm going to bring up our our, our favorite nemesis elon musk okay good or bad whatever he i'm saying that he got to where he is because he had some success but but now that he's uh you know but before the whole twitter thing blew up and and i still think that there's another chapter that story that but you know we 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 praised him when he came out with the first electric car but then the electric car got to be too big and people started kind of damning him or he, uh, he went from the electric car and went to the rocket ship and had some success there and we were really excited about that but then we it, it's just we, we want people to succeed, but they can't be too successful. And that's the part that I think is really uh, at the heart of the issue here. I, I think that's a great point, Bob. And yeah. I wanted I did. I was about to leave this when Eric brought up a really interesting point. Um, and that is, you know, the the legislators and the fact that there may not be a way to open the app store and still enjoy the protections we enjoy. And that's what bothers me a lot about some of the politicians that I hear get on here and say, you know, that this needs to be opened up and this is hurting our constituents. And it's like, okay, I'll buy the argument that maybe that Jim's argument and others' argument that maybe App X didn't get developed because the developer didn't think they could make it on the App Store, couldn't make enough money to to make it viable. The, but the, no, the, the the question is that will Apple even allow it you have to put all the investment in up front and apple will not tell you in advance whether they will allow it or not so they won't tell you they won't tell you but they have, look they have a pretty a pretty well established now set of guidelines and if and if you don't agree with that then i would point you to all the apps in the I, app store I, I i no i disagree with that i think yeah you want to make another app that's just like apps in the app store you know fine but anything that pushes the envelope uh, and, and, you know, there's, you know, being in the developer community and, you know, following the developer social media, see all the time, all kinds of capricious uh, behavior on, by Apple on terms of what they allow uh, unpredictably. And in some cases, it can just be very on, you know, what, uh, re you know, reviewer happened, you know, or maybe what they ate for breakfast. Um all kinds of odd things. I, mean, I, I think that is the biggest thing in the developer community is, you know, just, you know, oh, you know, I had this critical bug update and, you know, 
customers are having crashes or losing data. I fixed it and Apple will not let me release it. Happens all the time. Um, yeah, uh, I, I mean, I've heard those stories too, you know, but I haven't heard them all the time. And, well, and I, the, well, I wouldn't expect you to. Yeah, but but the all the time kind of comment always disturbs me a little bit because that's so general. You know, I, I somebody started running 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 list of those apps or those circumstances, and then maybe I'll be, maybe I'll become convinced that they're a lot more frequent and a lot more important than I feel like they are. I mean, look, hey, the 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 tech press is always looking for something interesting, so go out there and uh, and, and there are some that are definitely hostile to Apple. So go and go and quantify this, you know, and then, and, and both bolster Jim's argument and bolster the developer's argument. What about the problem of apps going into the store and where they look like another successful app, they get purchased, people spend money. Um, and, but it's not the original app, which also damages the developer. It, it, it makes the, the, consumer unhappy um yes you can appeal and maybe get your money back but that's something where i really would expect the the apple store to go a little bit further to help developers out in that kind of situation and i see it happening a little bit too frequently and maybe not as much help and as assistance as should be there i mean it's it's too easy to go into the store looking for an app especially one that's been talked about and end up with something that isn't the right one. That kind of goes back to gems. I go to Google and search for it to try and find it because if you search in the Apple store, mm, you know, sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. But same thing. I'm, I'm going to be argumentative here, but same thing with Google. I mean, I could search on it, search for it on Google and find exactly the same fake app. And we also we also for all heard all the stories that that come out every so often about counterfeit Nike shoes and counterfeit this and counterfeit that. And while I'm not sure that a counterfeit Nike shoe is going to necessarily do anybody damage except for financial damage, you start hearing then about the the counterfeit carburetors or spark plugs. Well, now you have a whole other matter. Well, so counterfeit counterfeit fashion. I mean, you have Louis Vuitton and Coach yeah. and a lot of those others too. Yeah, and so you know. Are they lower quality? I, I, I guess there's an argument for that. I, I think the reason why people are, are doing a web search for an app is because you can search in the store and you get a bunch of results, but you're not sure. You can search on the web and it gives you some links and there are fewer of them. And some of the, the really recently put into the store ones aren't there. You're still ending up at the Apple store at the end because... That's the only place to go to get your iOS app. It's sort of how do you check? You know, and I would much prefer Apple to do a little bit more work to make sure it's clear that, you know, something with a very close to similar icon, almost identical same name, that it, those two things are not both in the store at the same time. Um, All right. Is this an argument for Apple to? get seriously into the search engine business and uh, and try and create something that could compete with Google? Uh, because well, in terms I mean, of you're apps, right. if they, if, you know, they've got this supposed app store that they supposedly are spending all this, you know, money and providing a developer service that you know, we're, we're paying for. Uh, and, and it's, you know, an anti-service. Well, it, ha it, it has a subpar mm -hmm. search. And I wouldn't say it's an anti-service. Yeah. Uh, it is if it, it is if a customer is looking for my app and Apple directs them. You know, they search for my app and Apple directs them. And in some cases, you know, these have been there have been counterfeits where people have somebody else has downloaded the, an app and then resubmitted the same code binary um, and put it on the store and. There's even been cases where people have had the original app taken down and Apple's like, oh, this is a copycat app when, you know, they're taking down the original app and leaving the copycat up. 
All right. So, um, so again, does this mean that Apple should uh, work on creating a more robust search system? Uh, and and I'm saying something on par with Google because that's that's our standard that we all yeah. understand. Even if it's not something that they that they use um, like as an alternative to Google for web searches, but something that's incredibly robust, certainly better than what they have today that they can use internally for uh, app store searches, music searches, TV show searches, all of their services. Sounds like, well, not, not to mention Siri. Um, you know, mm-hmm. Apple is in the search business, but they don't do a very good job of it. I agree with that. Yeah, I'll agree yeah. with that. Yeah, yeah. Their, their just... solution to bad searches seems to be curated lists. You know, they post something from some person who says, hey, these are the apps I use, and here's the link to get them. And and I I think that it has a long way to go to really meet my expectations of where it should be. I do like the curated lists. However, I agree with you. Yeah, because, I, I mean, lists, you know, I can make my list. Jeff can make his. Yeah, I have no interest in list curated yeah. list from Apple. Yeah, but you know, so well, even so, you know, just because something works for Jeff and Eric doesn't mean it's going to work for me. Right, right. No, I, I want mean, search you know, that works. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we, and, yep. and the only reason that the the curated list I find that sometimes useful is that the link that you follow to get to an app isn't a clone app. It isn't a, a fake app that just got put up or a really recent app. It's the one that people actually have been talking about. But I would prefer to be able to find and discover my own apps, not to be... Yeah, I, I, I think that's why Google stuff. Search, you know, is probably not going to find the clone apps because Google is, you know, they've got information of context of, you know, who's linking to this. And, you know, so if, if there's like a bunch of reviews that link to the real app, that's going to rise up in you know, in the in the in the Google search. You know, and Google search isn't as good as it used to be either, for anything. So you know, that's a difficult problem. And I seems, I see a problem like with, with Google AIs, search. Gonna... Sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you. Go ahead. Um, I I see a problem with Google search uh, from a regular user perspective because let's say you are going uh, to try and find an app for your iPhone. Most people aren't going to search for an app name. They're going to search for what the app does. And when they do that, the results they get back um, are, uh, to me, are subpar. Here's my example. I decided that I wanted to find uh, uh, an app for the iPad that let me would let me do infinite Zoom drawings. Now, I know I can do that with some of the apps that I already have, but I thought, hey, this would be cool if there's an app specifically for that. The results that I got were interesting because, uh, um, I mean, it found some things that were for the iPad. A lot of what it showed me, even though I explicitly said for iPad, were not iPad apps. And most of what it found were apps that I would not want to install. So it was it was not a uh, a productive search. If I went to the app store and did the same thing, I would get no. Let me rephrase that because I am saying it as if I didn't. When I went to the app store and did the same search, I ended up seeing. Uh, a subset, and the subset was the stuff that's available just on the App Store, and uh, and it included a lot of the same garbage apps. So it it was frustrating, <laughs> and I think that's what the average user experiences that they're they're not finding what they want, regardless of where they search. I, I would say that I would never attempt to do a search on the App Store or on Google for a task. I just think that's impossible. There's, there's, I think there's no way to do that. And all the apps that I ever get are basically referrals. I see something on social media or on, on, on RSS or, you know, somebody, and I'm like, Oh, I, I got to make a note of that or maybe just buy it immediately. So otherwise I'll never find it again. 
Um, you know, like, well, maybe I can use that. So I'll just buy it now. Um, but you know, if I was like, oh, I want to try to do some task, there's, there's no way I can find that with app store or Google or anything, this, you know, cause there's just so much junk and so much pollution in the search results that it's impossible. Uh, I agree. And chat GPT is not going to help us with that. And I was going to just bring that up. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> I, I was totally reading your mind, Dave. I'm sorry I said I it for you. Yeah, but the, but your your thought was so strong, it just pushed its way out of my mouth. It bring it brings Bing into this too. I mean, uh, obviously Bing's got the uh, the pilot that they're trying. Lots of people trying to get in to try it. Um, and Chat Chat GPT is going to be uh, quite a game changer with search. I mean, and, and into the App Store world. I mean, how much easier is it going to be able to find? Like what, what Jeff's example was of, of you know specifically for drawing and being able to do that. Um, I think Google's it's going to be harder. I think Google Google's results were not great. Next time on Mac Voices, this panel finally wraps up the App Store monopoly debate. We take a look at some typical Microsoft moves, talk about Cloudflare and Mastodon, and get an eyewitness account of Apple's Super Bowl halftime show. That's next time on Mac Voices. We'll see you then. As always, I'm Chuck Joyner. Thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.